Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you the basic knowledge of a synthesizer. Now, there is a different type of synthesizers out there, like granular, FM, virtual analog, digital, wavetable, sample bass, etc. But on this tutorial, I'm not going to go in deep into all of these different types of synthesizer. I just want to be sure that you understand the basics so it will be easy for you to use all of these different types of synthesizers and it also gonna help you to create your own sound or modify presets. Now, the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is because I'm using synthesizers since the beginning of my career. And especially at the beginning, I didn't have the knowledge to create my own sounds and I didn't even have the knowledge to modify presets. And this is a really important step to improve your production and your sound design skills in terms of synthesizers. Now, of course, at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you my personal recommendation of a different synthesizers for beginners. So with that say, let's start with this tutorial. Okay, so first of all, let me show you the tools that I will be using for this tutorial. So first, I have in here a preset that I create with Patcher using the control surface. And this is a map. Now, this map basically represents a basic routing of a synthesizer and also the different main section that we have on a synthesizer. Now, together with this map, I'm also going to be using Serum to explain all of these different sections. Now, the reason why I use Serum is because it have a really good visual feedback of each of these different modules. And I'm also going to use some of the most popular plugins out there so you are going to be able to understand all of these modules, not just in Serum, also in all of these different synthesizers, like Silent One, Minimog or Mini V by Arturia, Jupiter 8, Reaper 5 and Diva. Okay, so now let me give you a quick explanation of the basic routing. So first of all, we have the oscillator section. This is pretty much what creates the sound on our synthesizer. Next, the signal goes into the mixer. And from the mixer, we can control the overall volume of a single or multiple oscillator. Then the signal goes into the filter. Now in here is where we start to shape our sound. Now depending on the synthesizer, we might have a single filter or multiple filters. Then after the filter, the signal goes into the amplifier or ADSR or attack, decay, sustain, release. Now these two sections, the amplifier and the filter, we use pretty much to shape our sound. And last, the signal goes into the effect section. And after the effects, the output, okay? Then we also have the LFO, which is not part of the routing. And that's because we use the LFO to control uh, different parameters. Now, one more time, depending of the synth, you might be able to control a lot of parameters inside of this different section, or depending of the synth, the LFO section might be limited to control just few parameters. Okay, so now let's have a look in deep to each of these different sections. Let's start with the oscillator. Okay, so here on Serum, we have a two different types of oscillator. Oscillator A and Oscillator B. Now, we also have a sub oscillator and the noise. And as you can see, the oscillator A and B have a lot of uh, parameters uh, to modify. Now, as I mentioned at the introduction of uh, this video, I'm not going to go in deep to the different type of uh, synthesizer, but also I don't want to go in deep to the different parameters that you can modify on each synthesizer. So in this case, I'm only going to explain the oscillator A because the B is exactly the same. So let's have a look to the oscillator A. Now, the most important thing about the oscillator is the shape that you choose because each of the shapes offers a different sound characteristics. Now let's start by explaining the basic shapes. Now in here as you can see I select the preset of the basic shapes. Now if I go to the edit tab in here we can visualize each of these basic waves. We have a shine wave, we have a south tooth wave, we have a triangle wave, we have a square wave and a two different pulse waves. So now I'm going to close this tab and let's have a listen to each of these different waves. Let's start with the sine wave. 
Sawtooth Triangle Square Pulse Wave and Narrow Pulse Wave Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the South Tooth and now let me explain you the main different parameters that you can modify with an oscillator. So first of all, we have the octave and you can select in which octave you want this oscillator to be playing. Next, we can also modify the semitones. And last, we can also modify the fine tune. Okay, so these are the main parameters that you have to know at least at the beginning. Okay, so now that we cover the oscillator on Serum, let's have a look to the oscillator section in a different synthesizer. So let's have a look to Silent, and here on Silent, we have the oscillator A1 and oscillator A2. But the cool thing about Silent 1 is that you have two different parts, which means that you have like two synthesizer in one. So if I go to the part B, in here we have again oscillator B1 and oscillator B2, which means that in Silent 1 we have up to four different oscillator. So I'm gonna explain only the oscillator A1. So here on the oscillator A1, first of all, we can select the type of way that we want. So click on the wave and in here we can select the shine, saw, triangle, pulse, half pulse, quarter pulse, tri saw or noise. Now same as on Serum, we can change the octave, the note or the fine tune. Okay, and now let's have a look to the next synthesizer. In this case, a Mini Moog Ebulation by Arturia, the Mini B. Now, in here we have three different types of oscillator, but first of all, we can select in between all of these type of waveform. Triangle, saw triangle, saw tooth, square, white rectangle and narrow rectangle. And here on the left, we can change the range or the octave. <laughs> Okay, now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, the Jupiter 8. Now, in this case, the name is different, BCO1 and BCO2, which means voltage control oscillator. It's a different name, but it's pretty much the same, an oscillator. Now, this is different as on Serum because each oscillator offers different type of waveforms and also different parameters. So let's start with the oscillator 1. So first, with the oscillator 1, we can select in between these four different waveforms. Triangle, sawtooth, pulse wave, and square. And here on the left, we can also change the range or the octave. Okay, now let's have a look to the oscillator 2. So I'm gonna put the mix all the way to the oscillator 2. And in here, first of all, we have different types of waves. So let's have a listen to this wave. Let's start with the shine. Sawtooth. Pulse. And noise. Next, in the oscillator 2, we can also control the fine tune. And last, for the oscillator 2, we can control the range in semitones and octaves. Okay, let's have a look to the next synthesizer, Repro 5. So in here, we have two different types of oscillator, oscillator A and oscillator B. So let's have a look first to the oscillator A. Now in Repro 5, we can choose in between these two type of shapes, a sawtooth wave or a pulse wave, or we can select both and have a mix in between these two shapes. Now here on the left, we can control the frequency of the oscillator.
then we can also control the octave. Okay, and now let's have a look to the last synth, Diva. Okay, so the cool thing about Diva is that you can select the type of oscillator that you want to use. So here on the bottom of the oscillator section, you can choose in between these five different options. Triple VCO, Dual VCO, Single DCO, Dual VCO Echo or Digital. Let's have a look first to the Triple VCO. So here on the Triple VCO, we have three different types of oscillators. And with this oscillator, first of all, we can modify the waveform. Next, we can also change the range. And with the triple VCO selected, you don't have a fine tune knob for the oscillator one, but you have the detune or fine tune for the oscillator two and three. So let me bring up the volume of the oscillator two and let's have a listen to the oscillator two. And now let's do the same with the oscillator three. Okay, now let's have a look to the dual VCO. Now on the dual VCO, we have two different types of oscillators. The oscillator one is slightly different than the oscillator two. So we have the first type of waves, triangle, sawtooth, and the pulse wave, exactly the same in both oscillator. But last, the fourth wave on the oscillator one is a noise, and the fourth wave on the oscillator two is a shine wave. Now let's have a listen to these different type of waves from the oscillator one. Now of course you can also change the range of the octave. And for the oscillator two you also have the detune or fine tune knob. Okay, now let's have a look to the DCO. This is a single oscillator, but you also have a sub oscillator and the noise. Now in here you have two different types of waveforms and inside of these waveforms, you have a different types of a pulse and a cell tooth. So let's have a listen first to the cell tooth. <laughs> And now let's have a listen to the pulse. And of course, you can also select the range or the octave. Okay, now let's have a look to the dual BCO echo. Now, in the dual VCO, we have a two different oscillator with a different wave shapes on each oscillator. So on the oscillator one, we have a triangle, sawtooth, pulse width, and noise. And on the oscillator two, we have a sawtooth, square, pulse, and a ring. Now on the oscillator one, if you select the pulse wave, you can also control the pulse width. And you can of course control the octave of range. Now on the oscillator two, you can also control the fine tune or the detune knob. And you can of course control the octave or the range. Okay, and last, let's have a look to the digital. So here on the digital, we have two types of oscillator and both of them are the same. So let's have a listen to the oscillator one. First of all, we have these different types of waveform.
and depending of the waveform that you select, you might have different parameters to modify. In this case, we have the tune and the cue. In the next waveform, we have a tune and feedback. In the next one, we have the pulse width and the spike up, etc. Okay, so now that we cover the oscillator section, let's have a look to the next section, the mixer. Okay, so the mixer section is really simple, but I just want to cover this section because it might look different on a different synth. In fact, some synthesizer doesn't even have a mixer section, but all of the synths have a mixer in a different way. So let's start with Serum. So Serum, for example, doesn't have a mixer section, but what Serum have is a level control of each individual oscillator. So in here we have the level control of the oscillator A. Now, if I enable the oscillator B here on the bottom, we have the level of the oscillator B. Now, if I go to the sub oscillator, in here we also have the level control of the sub oscillator. And last, here on the noise, we also have a level control of the noise. So that's pretty much the mixer of Serum. Now, let's have a look to the next synth, Silent. Okay, so silent is slightly different. We have a mixer section where we can control the mix of the part A, the mix of the part B, and the main volume. Again, you have on silent the part one or the part B, where you can control the volume separately using the mixer. Now, if I go to the part A, same as on the part B, on each oscillator, you have a volume control where you can control the volume or each oscillator. Then if I go to the oscillator A2 in here the same you also have a volume control so now let's have a look to the next synthesizer okay so here on the mini V you have a proper mixer section so the first one is the volume control of the oscillator 1 the second one for the oscillator 2 and the third one for the oscillator 3. Now you also have a control for the noise volume and you can also select the type of noise that you want, white or pink. Okay, now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, which is the Jupiter 8. Now, Jupiter 8 doesn't have a mixer section and it also doesn't have a volume control for each oscillator. What we have on the Jupiter 8 is a source mix in between the oscillator 1 and the oscillator 2. So when this knob is fully on the left, we're only gonna listen to the oscillator 1. And when it's fully to the right, we are gonna listen only to the oscillator 2 and if we leave it on 50% we are gonna have the same level on each oscillator okay let's have a look to the next synthesizer repro 5 now here on repro 5 we have a mixer section where we can control the volume of the oscillator a the volume of the oscillator b and also the volume of the noise and last let's have a look to the last synthesizer diva now, Diva, again, it depends of the type of oscillator that we have selected. So with the triple VCO, we have a mixer section. We can control the volume of the oscillator 1, the volume of the oscillator 2, and the volume of the oscillator 3. And we can also control the volume of the noise and the type of noise, pink or white. Now, if we change the type of oscillator from triple VCO to dual VCO, now in here, we have the same as we had on the Jupiter 8. We don't have any more the mixer section and we cannot control the volume of the oscillator individually. What we have is a mix knob. So again, fully on the left, we only listen to the oscillator one and fully on the right to the oscillator two. Two, and we can blend the signals using the mix knob. Again, on 50%, we are going to have the same volume on the oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Now, if we change from the dual VCO to the DCO, now on the DCO, again, we don't have the mixer and we cannot control the volume of this oscillator. But what we can do, we can control the volume of the sub oscillator and the volume of the noise. Now let's change to the dual VCO echo. Now this is a slightly different than the dual VCO because in the, the dual VCO echo we have a mixer section where we can control the volume of the oscillator 1 and the volume of the oscillator 2. 
And last, let's have a look to the digital. Now, the digital is exactly the same as the Jupiter 8 and the dual VCO. We don't have a mixer, we cannot control the volume of each individual oscillator, but we have the mix knob. So again, fully on the left, we are only gonna listen to the oscillator one, and fully on the right, we are gonna listen to the oscillator two. And in the middle, we are gonna have the same volume on the oscillator one and oscillator two. And now that we covered the mixer, let's have a look to the next section, the filter. Again, I'm gonna open Serum, and Serum by default have the filter disabled. So if you wanna use the filter, first of all, enable the filter. Now here on Serum, we can choose in between different types of filter. So if I click again on the name of this preset, this is the MG Low 24. So if I click on it, we have a huge range of filters, a normal, multi, flangers, and misc. I'm not gonna go into each of these filters, I'm just gonna show you the most common filters. So going back to normal, the most common filter on a synthesizer is the low pass filter. And normally we have two types of a low pass filter, a low pass filter 24 or low pass filter 12. Now the difference in between these filters is how aggressive you wanna cut all of these frequencies. With the low 12, you are cutting 12 dB per octave and with the low 24 you are cutting 24 dB per octave. So let me select first the 12 dB, let me bring down the cutoff and now just pay attention to this curve. So now if I select the 24 you can see that it's cutting more frequencies than the 12 dB per octave. So now with this type of filter selected, let's have a look to the most common parameters that we can modify in a filter. So first of all, we have the cutoff. This is pretty much where we want to start to cut those frequencies. We can open the filter or close the filter. And next, we have the resonance. So we use the resonant knob pretty much to achieve the effect of wow, wow, wow. So let me give you an example. Now, if I remove the resonance, and the resonance can also add a lot of character to the filter. So now let me just change the type of the filter and this time I'm gonna go with a high pass filter. Then we also have a band filter, which is a mix in between a low pass and a high pass filter. Next, we also have a peak filter, and as the name itself is just a peak filter. And last, we have the notch filter. Okay, and now let's have a look to the filter section of different synthesizers. Let's go with silence. And now here on silence, we have two different filters, one for the part A and another for the part B. Now I'm just gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna go to the filter A. And now here on the filter section, first of all, we can select the filter type, bypass or no filter, a low pass, band pass and high pass. So let me select the low pass. Now with the low pass selected, we can also control the type of a low pass, 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave. Next, we have the cutoff and the resonance. So let's have listened to this type of filter. Let's have a listen to the band pass. And now to the high pass. And of course, we can also add resonance. Wow, 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 wow. 
And last, here on Silent, we also have a filter control, which pretty much control both filters, the filter A and the filter of the part B. So with this control, we can control the cutoff of both filter and the resonance of both filters. Okay, now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, the Mini V. Now here on Mini V, we only have one type of filter, which is a low pass filter. And we only have a few parameters to modify. The cutoff, filter emphasis or resonance, and the amount of contour or filter envelope that we are gonna see now in a second, okay? But the good thing about this filter is that it have an unique sound because of the curves. So let's have a listen to this filter. Okay, and next let's have a look to the filters of the Jupiter 8. Now here on the Jupiter 8, we have uh, two types of filter. We have a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So let's have a listen first to the high pass filter. And that's the only knob that you have to control the high pass filter, which is the cut knob, which goes from 5 Hz up to almost 2000 Hz. Okay, and now here on the low pass filter, we can control the cutoff, the resonance, and the slope 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave. So let's have a listen to the low pass filter. Okay, and now let's have a look to the filter of the Repro 5. Now here, same as the Mini V, we only have a single filter, which is a low pass filter. So we can control the cutoff, we can control the resonance, and we can control the envelope amount. Again, we are gonna have a look now in a second. So let's have a listen to this filter. Okay, and last, let's have a look to the filters of Diva. Now, Diva, same as the oscillator section, have five different type of filters. Ladder, cascade, multimode, bytes, and UB. Each of them with a different characteristic. So let's start with the ladder filter. Now, here on the ladder filter, we can control the cutoff, we can control the slope, 24 dB per octave or 12 dB per octave, and we can control the emphasize or the resonance. So let's have a listen to this filter. Okay, now let's change the filter from ladder to cascade. Now here on the cascade filter, it just has a slightly different sound. So again, we can control the cutoff, we can control the resonance, we can control the slope 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave, and we can also control the type of a filter, rough or clean. So let's have a listen to this filter. Okay, now let's have a look to the multi-mode filter. Now, this is similar to the cascade. We can control the cutoff, the resonance, but this time we can also select the type of filter that we want. We can select a low pass filter, 24 dB per octave, a low pass filter with a 12 dB per octave, high pass filter or a band pass. So let's have a listen to this filter. 
Next, let's have a look to the byte filter. Now, here on the byte filter, we can control the cutoff, we can control the peak or the resonance, and we have two different types, rep1 and rep2. So, let's have a listen to this filter. Rep2. Okay, last, let's have a look to the UB filter. With UB filter, we have two different types of filters and we can morph in between these filters. So with the morph knob, with this knob fully on the left, we have a low pass filter. And with the knob fully to the right, we have a high pass filter. And if we put it on the meter, then we have a band pass filter. Next, we also have the resonance, and the cutoff. So let's have a listen to this filter. Okay, and last here on Diva, we can also have access to another filter. So again, depending of the type of oscillator, if I go to the dual VCO, now in here, I can select another type of filter. So if I click to this arrow, I can select these three different types of high pass filter. High pass filter post, where you only have one knob to modify this frequency. <laughs> Then you can also select high pass filter pre, where you have a proper knob to select the frequency. And last, you have a high pass filter byte, where you can control the cutoff, the peak or resonance, and you can also select the type of high pass filter, rev1 or rev2. <laughs> So remember that the filter is a really important section of your synthesizer. And now let's have a look to the next section, the envelopes. Okay, so now let's have a look to the amplifier envelopes or ADSR section. Now, first of all, for what do we use the envelope section? Well, same as the filter, we use these two sections, the filter and envelopes, to shape our sound. Now, in the case of the filter, we shape our sound in terms of frequency or hertz. But with the envelopes, is slightly more complicated. We can control with the envelopes the volume in a more advanced way we can also control the filter and depending of the synth you can also control different parameters so now let's have a look to the envelopes of a serum now here on the bottom we have a three different types of envelopes let's have a look first to the envelope one now the main parameters of an envelope are the attack decay sustain and release now depending of the synth you might also have some extra parameters parameters, but the common parameters of an envelope, again, are the attack, decay, sustain, and release. Now, in the case of a serum, the envelope 1, by default, control the volume of the different oscillator and also the noise. It doesn't mean that the envelope 1 can only control the volume of the oscillator and the noise, as you can assign this envelope in serum to control any parameter that you want. But at the moment, let's focus on a volume. 
let's have a look first to the attack. So if I modify the attack, this is pretty much the time that is going to take the volume of the oscillator from where I press the key to reach the maximum level. So let's have a listen to the envelope with this setting. And now if I bring back the attack to zero, it reached the maximum level as soon as I press the key. Let's again add some attack. Okay, let me reset the attack and now let's have a look to the decay and sustain. Now these two knobs works together. So first, in order to explain you the decay, I'm going to reduce all the way to the left the sustain. So now with the decay, I can control how long does it take to the sound when reach the maximum level to go back to a zero. So let's have a listen to these settings. Now I can even make longer the decay and I can even make it shorter. And now I can play with the decay and with the attack. If you put attention to this shape that I already create, when I press a key, you are going to see a little dot, which pretty much follows this shape in real time. Okay, and now let's explain the sustain. Depending on the position that we set this knob, will pretty much hold the volume when the signal reach this position till I release my finger from the keyboard. So let's have a listen with this setting. So if I put the sustain knob all the way to his maximum value, the decay doesn't have any function. Let me now change the sustain to a lower value. And if I release my finger from the keyboard, it stops straight away. Okay, so now I can play in between the attack, the decay and the sustain. Now, with the sustain on zero, it doesn't matter for how long I hold my finger playing a key on the keyboard, the sound it will stop based on the decay. But again, if I bring back a little bit of sustain, it will hold the volume till I release my finger from the keyboard. And the last setting is the release. Now the release knob pretty much control how long does it takes from where I release my finger from the keyboard till get back to zero. So let's have a listen with these settings. Okay, and now I'm gonna release my finger from the keyboard. So now again, one more time, let's play with all of these settings. I'm gonna add a little bit of attack then I'm going to make the decay shorter, I'm going to increase the sustain, and I'm going to also increase the release time. And let's have a listen to these settings. And if I put the release back to zero, as soon as I release my finger from the keyboard, the volume go back to zero instantly. Okay, so now that we cover the basic control of an envelope, let's see how can we use an envelope to control the filter. So first of all, I'm going to enable the filter. Now I'm going to put the cutoff knob on the middle position. Next, I'm going to change the envelope and I'm going to go to the envelope number two. Now in order to link the envelope two to the filter, here on Serum, I just have to left click on this arrow and drag and drop into the parameter that I want modify in this case the cutoff so now the envelope 2 is assigned to the filter now let me press a key and let's have a listen to it 
it sounds exactly the same because of the shape that I have on this envelope. So again, I can use the attack, decay, sustain and release to control the filter. So let me first add a little bit of attack, 10 millisecond. Now I'm gonna reduce the sustain all the way to zero and I'm gonna also add a little bit of decay. And now let's have a listen to it. I can even make shorter the decay. So now if I put the cutoff all the way to the minimum, let's have a listen to this sound. Okay, so as you can see, the envelope 2 is controlling in real time the cutoff filter based on when I press a key. Okay, so now that we cover the basics of the envelope, let's have a look to the envelopes of a different synthesizer. So first, let's have a look to Silent 1. Now here on Silent 1, we have four different types of envelopes. We have the amp envelope, which control the volume. So the amp envelope A controls the volume of the oscillator A1 and the oscillator A2. Now, if I go to the part B, the amp envelope B controls the volume of the oscillator B1 and the oscillator B2. So let me go back to the part A and now I'm gonna press a key and I'm gonna modify a little bit the envelope. Okay, so again, this is the amp envelope which control the volume. Now, here on the bottom, we have the mode envelope 1 and mode envelope 2. Now, we can assign these two different envelopes to control uh, different parameters. In order to do that, I'm simply gonna go to the bottom of the envelopes. I'm gonna click into this blue window and it's gonna open all of the different parameters that I can control with these envelopes. So, we have all of these parameters from the oscillator we have all of these different parameters from the filters and all of these different parameters from the MISC. Now I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to use the envelope 1 to control again the cutoff of the filter A. So I'm going to assign the cutoff A. Now I'm going to use the amount knob to be able to control the cutoff. Now I'm going to reduce the sustain all the way back to zero and I'm going to add a bit of decay. Now let's have a listen to it. Let me reduce a little bit the cutoff. Now, if I reduce the envelope amount back to zero, it will not have any effect. And if I add a little bit of amount, let's have a listen to it. Okay, now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, the Mini V. Now in here, as I mentioned earlier, you have the amount of contour. Now this is pretty much the envelope amount. So I'm going to bring back the cutoff all the way to the left. And now I'm going to use the envelope amount to control the filter with this envelope on the filter section. So first of all, let me put a quick attack. Let me reduce a little bit the decay and the sustain all the way to zero. And now let's have a listen to this sound. Now, if I fully open the filter and I reduce the envelope amount of the filter, I can also control the volume with this envelope, which this time it's called loudness contour. So again, I have the attack, decay and sustain. So let me modify a little bit the attack, the decay and the sustain. And let's have a listen to it.
Okay, now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, the Jupiter 8. Now, this again is slightly different. So first of all, we have uh, two different envelopes here on the right side, the envelope one and the envelope two. Now, this time, for whatever reason, is a bit different. The envelope two is the one that control the volume of the oscillator one and oscillator two. So if we go to the BCA or the amplifier, here on the bottom we have uh, two different knobs. We can control the volume with an LFO, which we are going to see now in a second, and we can also control the level or the volume with the envelope 2. So with this knob all the way to the maximum position, now we can use the envelope 2 to control the volume of the oscillator 1 and 2. And now in order to control the filter with envelope 1 or 2, first we have to go to the filter section. Now here on the filter section, first of all, we can choose which envelope we want to use to control the filter, the envelope 1 or the envelope 2. Now I'm going to select the envelope 1, I'm going to use the amount knob to control the filter with the envelope 1. Okay, and now I'm just going to close the cutoff all the way back to the minimum position and now I can control with the envelope one the filter so let's have a listen to it Okay, now let's have a look to the next uh, synthesizer, the Repro 5. Now here on the Repro 5, this is uh, similar as the Mini B. We have uh, two different envelopes, one to control the filter and another to control the volume or amplifier. So let me modify these settings in real time. Okay, so now let's have a look to the filter envelope. So first of all, I'm going to close a little bit the cutoff and now I'm going to adjust the envelope amount in order to control the filter with the envelope. Okay, and last, let's have a look to the envelopes of a Diva. Now, same as the oscillator and the filters, for the envelopes, we can choose in between three different types of envelopes. ADS, analog or a digital. Now, this is a really cool feature of a Diva as depending on the envelope that you choose, your sound might have a completely different sound characteristic. But at the moment, I'm just going to use the digital. So I'm going to select the digital and I'm also going to change the second envelope to a digital as well. So similar as the other synthesizer, the envelope one will control the volume of the oscillator. So let me modify a few settings and let's have a listen to it in real time. Okay, and now let's use the envelope 2 to control the filter cutoff. Okay, now in order to do that, first of all, we have to use any of these two depth knobs on the filter. So as you can see, this one on the left is already assigned to the envelope 2. 
So I'm going to increase the depth in order to be able to control the filter with the envelope too. Okay, so now that we cover the envelope section, let's have a look to the effects section. Okay, so here back on the Serum, depending of the synthesizer that you use, you might have a couple effects to choose or you might have a huge range of effects, like on Serum. So if I go to the effects section, we have all of these different types of effects to choose, like hyper dimension, distortion, phaser, flanger, chorus, delay, compressor, reverb, EQ, and filter. Now, in order to start using this effect, simply enable one of these effects. In this case, I'm gonna enable the delay. And as soon as you enable this effect, you are gonna have a few parameters to modify. Now, the cool thing about the Serum is that the order of effects definitely is really important. So if I have a different effects enabled, then just by left-clicking on it, hold and drag and drop to the position that I want, I can reorganize the order of uh, these effects. So now let me press play and let's have a listen to these effects. Now let me disable the reverb and the flanger. Only the flanger and only the reverb. Now let's have a look to the different effects to the Silent One. Now here on Silent One, we have different types of effects. We have a distortion. We have a phase. We have a chorus. We also have an EQ to shape a little bit the sound. We have a delay. We have a reverb and we have a compressor. Now here, for example, on Silent, you cannot reorganize the orders of the effects. Now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, the Mini B3. Now here on the main screen, you don't have any effect, but if you go to the advanced tab, then you can go to the last option, which is effect. Now in here, you only have three different types of effects, a vocal filter, chorus and delay, and of course, some parameters of each effect to modify. So let's have a listen to these effects one by one. The vocal filter, chorus and a delay. Okay, now let's have a look to the effects of the Jupiter 8. Now, this is similar as the Mini V. In the front panel, it doesn't have any effects. So in order to add a different effects, simply go to the Advanced tab and the last option are the effects. So in here, we have a three different slots with a variety of effects to choose from. Reverb, Delay, Chorus, Flanger, Phaser, Overdrive, Compressor, Beat Crusher, Multi-Effect, Parametric EQ or Stereo Pan. And again, you have a three different slots to add three different types of effects. And now let's have a look to the next synthesizer, Repro 5. Now the effects section of Repro 5 are here on the bottom next to the keyboard. You can select the keys or you can select the effects. Now I have to recognize that the effects of a Repro 5 or pretty much all of the plugins by you here are really good. Now in here, the first effect that we have is a distortion. And next we have different effects like a pre amp, delay, EQ, reverb, etc. And the cool thing about Repro is that you can also reorganize the order of the effects. And last, let's have a look to a Diva. Now here on Diva, the effects are on the bottom on the right side. We have two different slots, effect one and effect two. And on each different slot, we can choose in between a chorus, a phaser, plate, delay, and rotary. Same for the effects too. We can select in between a chorus, a phaser, 
plate, delay and rotary. Now, depending of the effect that you select, you are going to have different parameters to modify. And now that we cover the effects section, let's have a look to the last section, the LFO and the matrix. Okay, so let's have a look to the last section, the LFO. Now, again, depending of the synth, you might have a single LFO, two or even more LFOs. And the reason why we use LFO is to control different parameters. So we already saw quite a lot of parameters depending of the section on the oscillator, even on the mixer, on the filters, amplifier and also effects. So we use the LFO pretty much to control all of these different parameters depending of the synth. So let's start with a serum. So here on serum, next to the envelopes, we have four different types of LFO. So first of all, we have the wave shape. Now this is pretty much the shape that is going to follow the parameter that you assign this LFO to. Perhaps if I assign the LFO 1 to the cutoff and now I press play, it pretty much gonna follow this shine wave. So let's have a listen to it. Now I can change the shape by clicking on this folder icon and in here I have different basic waves. MISC and a side chain. So I'm just gonna go to the basics and now I'm gonna select South Down. So now the filter, it will follow this shape of the LFO one. Okay, now let's have a look to the most common parameters that we can modify on an LFO. First of all, we can select the speed of the LFO using the rate knob. Now, how the rate knob works, it all depends on how you have configured the rate. You can configure the rate to follow the BPM of your project, or you can disable this option, and now you can control the rate based on hearth, which means in free mode. So let me press play, let me modify the rate knob and let's have a listen to the sound. And now if I enable the BPN mode, I can control the rate based on my project tempo. And now if I change the project tempo, let me put a crazy number in here like 200 BPM. You can see that the LFO is running faster. Now let me bring it back to 120. So again, the rate is synchronized with the BPM of our tempo. Now, another common parameter that we use to modify the envelope is, of course, the amount. Now, here on Serum is a little bit different. First, you have to select again the LFO. And now you can see that the parameter that you are controlling with an LFO is going to show up at this ring modulation, right? So you just have to go to this circle sign, left click on it, hold it. And now you can select the amount of the LFO that you want to control. So if I put it on zero, the LFO LFO will not have any effect. And now if I increase the amount, the cutoff is going to be controlling by the LFO one. Okay, so remember that here on Serum, you have four different types of LFO. And now let's have a look to the matrix. Now the matrix is a simple way to visualize all of the modulation that you have on your preset. In here, you also have some extra settings to modify. In here, I can visualize that the LFO 1 is controlling the filter cutoff, and I can also modify the amount. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I can also change the type if I want unipolar or bipolar. Now, in order to understand the difference between bipolar and unipolar, first of all, I'm going to leave it as a unipolar. So now, if I go back to the oscillator, in here, you can see that I can control the amount in a positive way and also a negative way. Now, if I go back to the matrix and I change the type to unipolar, now going back to the oscillator section here on the filter, now the amount it can be only positive or negative okay now going back to the matrix we also have some extra function to control but again i don't want to go in deep into all of these different settings so now let's have a look to the lfo of the next synthesizer silent one now here again next to the modulation envelope we have two different lfos the lfo one and the lfo two now same as on every lfo first of all we can select the type of wave that we want on the LFO. On silent one, we can select in between a sine, saw, ramp, triangle, pulse, half pulse, quarter pulse, tri saw, Lorenz, sample and hold, and random. So first of all, select the type of wave that you want to use. Next, here on the right, we can also select how do we want to control the rate of this LFO in sync with our project tempo or in free mode. So now if I go to the rate knob and I modify, you can see from the help screen of Silent that it shows the rate speed. Now, if I click on free, now I can control the rate in a free mode or in health. Okay, now in order to assign this LFO to any parameter, we have to do the same as we did with the modulation envelope. We are going to go to this blue box here on the bottom, click on it, and these are all of the different parameters that you can control with the LFO. As a quick example, let's control again the cutoff. So now I'm going to bring all the way to the maximum, the envelope amount. And for silent one, we also have a gain control, which is pretty much another envelope amount. Okay, so I'm going to bring this knob all the way to the maximum. And now let me press play and let's have a listen to it. <laughs> Now I'm going to change the shape to a saw tooth. I'm going to disable the free mode and I'm going to select the time one eighth. Okay, now let's have a look to the next synthesizer. Now here on the Mini V, you have two different types of LFO. As you can use the Oscillator 3 as an LFO, but this can be a little bit complicated and I just want to keep the things simple. So in order to find the LFO of this plugin, simply go to the Advanced tab, go to the LFO and in here you have the LFO where you can select the wave type that you want for the LFO the rate as a free mode or earth or sync to your project tempo. Now, in order to assign this LFO to an, a specific parameter, now you have to go to the modulation tab or the matrix. So now in here, first of all, you have to select the source. So I'm going to select as a source the LFO. Next, I also have the amount control and the destination. So now I'm going to select as a destination the cutoff filter. So now let me go to the filter, bring back all the way to the minimum, the cutoff point, and increase the amount of modulation. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the LFO and I'm gonna select the wave of the LFO, a cell tooth. So now let me press play and let's have a listen to it. So in this particular plugin, you have to play with these two different sections, the LFO and the modulation. 
Okay, and now let's have a look to the next uh, synthesizer, the Jupiter 8. Now, here on the Jupiter 8, we have uh, three different types of LFO. We have the LFO number one, which is on the main screen. And then if we go to the advanced tab in here, I can go to modulation and we have the LFO two and the LFO three. Now, let's go first with the LFO one. Now, the LFO one have a predefined destination. Now, how do we find all of this destination where well, we need to have a look to each of the different modules so first in here we have the bco modulator or in other words the oscillator modulator we have two different parameters to modify the frequency or the tune of the oscillator and the pulse width modulation if we have it selected on the wave type form okay so now let's imagine that i want to use the lfo1 to control the pulse width modulation so first of all i'm going to select the pulse width modulation on the bzo1 and now in here i can select the lfo1 to modify the pulse width modulation and with this knob i can control the amount so let me bring up the amount and now let me press play and let's have a listen to it now from the oscillator another parameter that we can modify is the frequency so here on the frequency section you can select which oscillator you want to send to the lfo to control the tune of oscillator in the middle position you are sending both if you move it to the bzo one you control only the pitch of the oscillator one and on the bottom you control the pitch of the oscillator two so let me put it on top to control the oscillator one now here I have two different options. I can control the pitch of the oscillator one with the LFO or with the envelope number one. In this case, I'm going to use the LFO. So now I'm just going to bring up the amount and let's have a listen to it. <laughs> Now, you can also use the LFO to control the filter. So in order to do that, you have to come to the filter section. Now, in here, you have to look for the LFO, which is this knob in here. Now, first of all, I'm going to bring to the minimum the filter. And now I'm going to go to this LFO modulation knob and I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. And now let me press play and let's have a listen to it. Okay, now if I go to the LFO, in here you have the command controls to control the LFO. First, you can select the wave type that you want for this LFO. Assign, sawtooth, square and random and last you can also control the rate in sync mode or in free mode or health okay now i'm gonna bring back the modulation of the lfo and let's have a look to the lfo 2 and 3 so here on modulation for the lfo 2 and 3 we have some extra parameters again i'm not gonna go in deep into these different parameters so first of all the lfo 2 and 3 are exactly the same so i'm just gonna explain the lfo 2 now in here under the waveform you can select the type of waveform that you want in this case is sine, but you can select in between triangle, south up, south down, square and sample and hold or random. So I'm going to select south down. And the cool thing about this plugin is that you have a visual feedback of the LFO. Now you can also change the polarity, unipolar or bipolar. Next, you can also change the rate in a free mode or hearth or in sync. And last, here on the bottom, you have the parameters that you can control with the LFO 2 and 3. We have some parameters to control on the global, some parameters to control on the oscillator section, on the filter section, on the envelopes, on the modes and the sequencer, and some parameters to control on the effects section. And last, here on the right, next to these two different destinations, you have the modulation amount. So as a quick example, let me choose as a destination again, the cutoff filter. I'm going to bring up the amount and let's have a listen to the sound.
Okay, and now let's have a look to the LFOs of the next synthesizer, Repro 5. Now, this one is a pretty easy. So, first of all, we have a single LFO, but same as the Minimog or a Mini V, we can use the oscillator B as an LFO. But again, I'm just gonna keep it simple, so let's have a look to the single LFO. So, we have this LFO where we can choose in between these three different types of waveform. We have a sawtooth, triangle, and square. We can also select more than one waveform and have a blend in between all of these type of shapes. Next, here on the left, we have again the rate pattern that we can control it in free mode or hearth, or we can enable the host sync button and control the rate of the LFO based on the time of our project. And last, in order to assign this LFO to any parameter, we have to use the matrix. Now, the matrix of a Repro 5 is really simple. We only have two slots. So I'm gonna use the first one as an example. So first of all, I'm gonna select the source. So I'm gonna click on the top, and in here, I'm gonna select the LFO. And next, I'm gonna select the destination. In order to do that, I'm gonna click on the destination window, and now I can select the parameter that I want to control with the LFO. Again, I'm going to select the cutoff of the filter. So now I can see that the LFO is the source and the filter cutoff is the destination. So now with the depth or the amount, I can control how much of the filter I want to control with the LFO. So let me press play and let's have a listen to it. Okay, and now let's have a look to the LFOs of the last synthesizer, Diva. Here on the left side, on the bottom, we have two different LFOs the LFO 1 and the LFO 2. Again, we have uh, different parameters uh, to modify, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. So first of all, we can choose the waveform that we want for this LFO. And we can choose in between a shine wave, a triangle, south up, south down, a square high low, a square low high, random and hold, and random glide. Next, you also have the sync button, but this time it works slightly different than all the synthesizer. We can select the speed of the LFO. We can select in between all of these options, which pretty much all of them are synchronized to the project tempo, or you can select one of these options on the top in order to control the speed of the LFO in free mode. You can select 10 second, 1 second, or 0 0.1 second. Next, here on the right, we can control the depth modulation Okay, similar as a silent one, we have two different ways to control the amount or the depth of modulation. Now, if I want to control a parameter with the LFO, Endiva is a little bit different. First of all, I have to think about the parameter that I want to modify. Let's put as an example the filter. So first, I have to come to the filter section. And now in this filter, we have two different knobs to control the cutoff of of the filter. So I'm just gonna go to the one on the right and as you can see this one is already assigned to the LFO tool. Now if you click to this little arrow it's gonna appear this list with all of the different sources to control the cutoff. In this case, I'm gonna select the LFO one. And now I'm just gonna increase the amount of modulation and I can also control the amount of modulation from the LFO one with this depth modulation knob. So let me press play and let's have listened to the sound. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so now that we cover all of the main section of a synthesizer, let's do a quick exercise. So let's imagine that we get a new synthesizer. In order to understand easily this new synthesizer, let me open again the map that I create with Apache. So these are all of the main section that we have to look into our new synthesizer. First, the oscillator section, which is pretty much what creates the sound of the synthesizer. Next, to see if there is any type of a mixer to control the volume of a single oscillator or multiple oscillator. Next, we are going to search for the filter section to see if there is a single filter or multiple filters and to see the different parameters that we can control from the filter. Next, we are going to search for the amplifier or envelope or ADSR and see if there is two or more types of envelopes. Next, we are going to have a look to the effect section and last we are going to have a look to the LFO section okay so now I'm going to close this map and as an example I'm going to open Hive 2 by you here now again similar as a diva it might look a bit intimidating at first but no worries let's follow the map that I create so first of all let's have a look to the oscillator section which is here on the top so we have on Hive 2 an oscillator 1 a sub oscillator 1 a sub oscillator 2 and the oscillator 2 okay let's focus on the oscillator 1 now here on the oscillator 1 here we can select the waveform so if i click on it in here i can select a wave table or all of these different type of basic shapes like shine wave okay next we can also control the octave the semitones and the detune or fine tune Let's see if Hive 2 have any type of a mixer. And as you can see, there is not a mixer section. But what we have is a volume control for each of these different oscillators. In here, I can control the volume of the oscillator 1. I can control the volume of the sub oscillator 1. I can control the volume of the sub oscillator 2 and the volume of the oscillator 2. Okay, now let's have a look to the next section, the filter. Okay, so here under the oscillator, we have the filter one. And on the right side, we have the filter number two. Okay, which means that we have two different filters on this synthesizer. Now, if I go to the filter, I can click on the name and I can choose the type of filter that I want. The low pass 24, low pass 12, band pass, high pass, etc. Okay, now here here on the filter section, we also have the main controls for the filter, a cutoff, resonance, and here on the bottom, we also have the modulation envelope amount. Okay, now let's have a look to the next section, the amplitude envelope or ADSR. So here on the, the filter section, we have the amp one, we have the envelope modulation one, the envelope modulation two, and the amp two. Let's keep it simple and let's have a look to the amp one and the envelope modulation one. So first here on the amp one, we have the common controls of an envelope, attack, decay, sustain, and release and with the envelope modulation one we also have the same controls the attack decay sustain and release in order to use the envelope modulation one with the filter we just have to increase the modulation amount to the envelope one and now we can use the envelope modulation one to control the filter next let's have a look to the effects section so here on the main panel if i go to the effects i can see that hive 2 offer all of these different types of effects distortion chorus reverb phaser EQ, compressor, and delay. And I can also reorganize the order of the effects. Okay, and last, let's have a look for the LFO section. So here under the filter as well, we have the LFO 1 and we have the LFO 2. Let's focus on the LFO 1. First of all, we can select the type of waveform that we want on our LFO. A shine wave, triangle, south up, south down, square high low, square low high, random hold and random glide. Next, we can also control the polarity, unipolar, 
or bipolar. And here on the bottom, we also have the rate knob. And next to the brain knob, we can select the time base or, or the time of how we control the LFO speed. If you click on it, then you can select same as Diva one in between all of these options. And last, here on the bottom, next to the key, we have the matrix, matrix A and matrix B, where we can visualize all of our modulation and we also have some extra settings. Okay, that was simple. So now let's put another example. This time I'm going to go with Arturia Analog Synth and I'm going to go with the OPXA. So same as with Hype, first of all, let's have a look for the oscillator section, which is here right in the middle. Now here on the OPXA, I can see that we have two different types of oscillator. The first one we can choose in between a sawtooth tooth or a pulse wave. And I can also combine these two wave form. Now for the oscillator one, I can also control the range or the octave. Now on the oscillator 2 is similar as the oscillator 1, <clears throat> we have the same waveforms, so tooth, a pulse, or I can combine these waveforms. And I can also control the frequency, this time in semitones or octaves, and I also have a detune knob. Okay, now let's have a look if the OPXA have any type of mixer. We have a volume control for the oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, which is here on the filter. It's a bit weird, but for whatever reason, we have the mixer on the filter section. So we can control the volume of the oscillator 1 and the volume of the oscillator 2. And we can also control the volume of the noise. So now let's have a look to the filter section, which is here on the right side of the oscillator. So OPXA only have a low pass filter, but the good thing is that it sounds really good. So let's have a look to the different parameters that we have on the filter. First of all, we have the frequency or the cutoff knob. Next, we have the resonance. Next, we have the modulation amount. And here on the bottom, we can select the type of low pass filter that we want 24 dB per octave or 12 dB per octave. Okay, next let's have a look to the envelope section, which is here on the right. Now on OPXA, we have uh, two different types of envelopes. We have the filter envelope and the loudness envelope or amplifier. So let's have a look first uh, to the filter envelope. And we can decide how much of the filter we control with the envelope with the modulation amount. And as in every envelope, we have the attack, decay, sustain, and release. Now here on the loudness envelope, same as the filter envelope, we can control the volume of the oscillator 1 and 2 with the attack, decay, sustain and release. Okay, next let's try to find the LFO, which on the OPXA is uh, this section in here, which is called modulation. Now on this section, I can see that I only have one single LFO. We can see that we can control the rate in free mode or hertz, and we also have the button for a sync the LFO to our project tempo. Then here on the bottom, we have the type of waveform. I can choose in between all of these type of waveform. Shine, triangle, so ramp, square, sample and hold or random and sample and hold smooth or random smooth. Now let's have a look if there is more than one LFO. As most of the plugin of Arturia, here on the top right corner, we have the advanced tab. So if I click on the advanced tab, in here I can see there is a modulation section, which means that we have another four extra LFO. Now for this specific plugin, it looks a bit different, but is exactly the same. So I can see in here we have the LFO one, where I can select First of all, the time of waveform that I want. Next, we have the total length or the rate, and I can synchronize or use it in free mode. This time, instead of hertz, we control the free mode in seconds. 
And last, here we can control the amount and the destination. So if you click on the destination, you have all of the parameters that you can control with this LFO. So every time that you purchase a new synth, just come down, follow the steps that I create on this map. Again, the oscillator, the mixer section, filters, amplifier or envelopes, the effects and the LFO. So with all of these different sections on mine, it will be really easy for you to understand any type of a synthesizer. Now we just cover a theory. If you want to see some practical example, creating a baseline, a plug, a lead, etc., then stay tuned to the channel because my next video, it will be some basic sound design examples. Okay, so now that we cover the basics of a synthesizer, I'm gonna give you my recommendation of a different synths for beginners. So I'm gonna start with a Diva by Yuhi. And I know that at first a Diva might look a little bit intimidating, but as soon as you learn how to use a Diva or you apply the knowledge that I already give you in this tutorial, you can get a huge range of sound exploration out of a Diva. And the sound quality of a Diva is absolutely incredible incredible. Now, if you don't have the budget to get Diva, then I'm going to give you a free recommendation, which is a Tyrell N6, also by Yuhi. Now, my second recommendation is Serum by Xfer, and that is three main reasons why I recommend Serum for a beginner. The first one is because even though Serum I think is more focused for a modern type of sounds, you can also create classic sounds or analog type of sounds. The second reason is because of the visual feedback that you get out of Serum, which will help you not to understand Serum, it will also help you to understand different synthesizers. And and the third reason is because Serum is one of the most popular synthesizers out there. So if you don't have the knowledge to create your own sound, with Serum you have a huge range of presets out there, from free to a premium presets. And my third recommendation is not a single plugin, it's a collection of plugins, which is the B Collection by Arturia. Now, same as Diva, it might look at first a bit intimidating because of all of these different type of instruments instruments, but the cool thing about the B Collection by Arturia is that you have a built-in tutorial on each of the different instruments, which will help you to understand this instrument and also a different instrument. So if you have the budget for the B Collection, in my opinion, is definitely a must. So these are my recommendations of different synthesizers for beginner. And that's all for me. Hope you like and learn something from this video. If you have any question, as always, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much. My name is John Hutt and I will see you in the next one.